Welcome to r slash off my chest, where OP realizes that she's in a cult. Our next Reddit post is from Automatic J. My older sister Jessie, who's 31, went no contact with me and the rest of the family close to 10 years ago. I was 13 when this happened, and all I remembered was I came home from school with my other siblings, and both of my parents told me that Jessie was no longer a part of our family, and that she had chosen Satan over family, and I remember being crushed. I think I cried when they first told me, because I felt like she had just abandoned me. After that conversation, my parents banned us from speaking about Jessie and removed all photos of her around the house. As months went on without Jessie, the more I grew to hate her and got angry that she chose Satan over our family. Meanwhile, for me, I stayed very much loyal to my parents. I studied the Bible day and night and I was active in my church just so I could prove to my parents that I wasn't like Jessie. At 16, my parents signed off and I got married to my now husband at 16? Yo, what? Then, six months after our wedding, I got pregnant with my first child and I had a tough birth. It was an at-home birth and, to put it in simpler terms, I almost died. I lost a lot of blood and, on top of that, I went into heart failure. I didn't know this, but Jesse tried showing up to the hospital, but my parents had security escort her out. Jesse tried to reach out to me numerous times throughout the years, but I always blocked her because I was under the impression that she was an apostate. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what apostate means. An apostate is a person who renounces a religion or political brief on, on principle. Okay, good to know. Fast forward to now. I'm 23 and I have four daughters. Wow, at 23? Also, recently I found out that I was pregnant and I went to an eye doctor appointment and guess who was at the front desk? My older sister, Jessie. I was kind of stuck for a moment because a part of me wanted to just hug her and tell her how much I missed her. But I just couldn't given everything that I was told about her. She tried to make small talk with me towards the end of my visit, but I gave her the cold shoulder a bit. She gave me a card with her phone number and told me to please meet up with her so she could explain her side. After three days of going back and forth with myself, I decided to meet up with her for closure. She told me she never wanted to leave me, but the church left her no choice. The man that she was married to at the time was abusive to her and was beating the crap out of her, and she begged the minister to be released from the marriage, but he didn't allow it. She was scared for her own life and the life of her son, so she left. As awful as it sounds, I didn't believe her because her ex-husband got remarried to one of my friends and she has no visible signs of abuse or let alone told me that she was getting hurt by him. She then said that my parents are part of a cult and that it destroyed our family. I remember I did get angry with her and started calling her an apostate and that she was lying to protect herself from sin. She then just lets me have it and says, I've been trying to be nice to you because even if you don't feel like it, you're a victim. You were a child bride who also dropped out of school to become a wife and mother. The only reason why the church is nice to you is because of your daughters and they don't want to piss you off and lose the girls. Oh, that is, oh, oh, that was a disgusting sentence to read. Oh, okay. If you want to continue to be brainwashed and spineless, be my guest. But if you can't leave for yourself, leave for your daughters. Then she just got up and left. Ever since that conversation, I've been replaying everything that I was ever taught in my life and questioning it. I've been Googling, reading Reddit stories, but thinking about the religion that I invested so much time into being a complete lie, it's honestly too hurtful to think about. Especially my husband. Is our relationship a lie? Did he groom me, or was he also a victim of the circumstances of our religion? I have the answer to none of these questions, and I quite honestly don't know if I want to know. OP wants to know if her husband groomed her. Does she post her, his age in the comments? He's 31, and OP is 23, so that's a 8-year age gap, which means when she was 16, he was 24. Well, in any event, OP, you are definitely in a cult. I can't believe you almost died. You almost literally died giving birth. And they're like, okay, let's put three more babies into you. F actually, four babies because OP's pregnant again. Jeez Louise. OP, girl, you're not just drinking the Kool-Aid. You are swimming in the Kool-Aid. Our next Reddit post is from Negative Mix. 
I am a 19-year-old guy, and I got the news that my elderly neighbor passed away this week. She was 94 and the most compassionate person I've ever met. She's always been an important person in my family's life. For some backstory, my parents had me when my dad was 16 and my mom was 18. My mom decided that she didn't want to have a child to take care of because she had so many goals and she didn't think that she could achieve them while raising a child. My dad begged her to keep me and he would take on all the responsibilities and raise me by himself. He managed to convince her not to abort, so he dropped out of high school, got his GED, and went to work on the pipeline to earn some money to save up so that he could afford to take care of me. My maternal grandparents didn't want anything to do with me either, so it was just me, my dad, and his parents. When my dad was 20, he moved out to an okay house that he found for somewhat cheap. This is when we met our neighbor, Betty. Betty made sure to welcome us with open arms and told us that if we ever needed anything at all to knock on our door. My grandmother had a health scare one night and my dad couldn't find anyone to watch me so he knocked on Betty's door. She agreed to watch me and from that day on she became my unofficial granny as she would say. She would frequently have dinner with us and as I got older me and my dad helped look after our house and do all of her yard work. Everyone in my family just fell in love with the beautiful person that Betty was. I don't want to drag the story out any longer, but she was always there for us and vice versa. Last night, there was a knock on the door. It was a lawyer explaining that Betty left us pretty much everything. She had said that she had felt alone, but we made her feel like family and she could never repay my father for all of his kindness and compassion. So this was her way to make up for that and it brought my father to tears. He put up a picture he had of all three of us, me, my dad, and Betty. I am so proud of the person my dad is and that he changed her life just as much as she changed ours. Rip, Granny Betty, we love you. Our next Reddit post is from Repulsive Pianist. I pooped my pants during a job interview last week. I know this sounds absurd, but it's exactly what the title reads. I had a job interview last week, and I pooped my pants during the interview. I don't know what messed up my stomach, but just before the interview, I felt that burning urge to go to the toilet. I felt that something was wrong, but I hoped that I could sort it out in 10 minutes. Boy, was I wrong. I literally pooped my pants, but it felt like there was more coming. I checked, I checked my phone and it was time for the interview. I didn't want to delay it because it was the final round with the COO of the company. I, jo <laughs> I joined the interview call after cleaning myself. We started, <laughs> I'm sorry, we started the interview and I could hear roaring noises coming from my bowels and I was sweating. I wished the interview would end quickly, but the guy kept asking and asking questions. In the end, I couldn't hold it up anymore, and I literally pooped my pants. The CEO told me, you're a great fit for the position, and I got the final offer. It's three times the annual salary of what I previously made, and with great benefits. I don't know if I should cry or laugh at that. I just left the call after saying goodbye. I had to throw my chair out and get a new one. It was a shitty interview, but it had a great ending. I'll probably tell this one to my grandkids in the future. <laughs> Ovi, I wonder if the, if the guy interviewing you knew what was going on and he was like, wow, this guy would rather poop his own pants than miss an interview? What a go-getter. He seems perfect for the job. Our next Reddit post is from Icefall. So when I was 15, I got my then girlfriend pregnant. When I told my parents, I didn't know what their reaction would be. It was worse than I thought. They just kicked me out, called me irresponsible and stupid, and told me they were ashamed to have me as their son. I packed a few bags and called around. I ended up living with my Aunt B, my sweet aunt who at the time was a widow and newly empty nest. She took me in with loving arms. Fast forward a bit. My then girlfriend had her baby girl, and for the first two months I would spend most of my time at my girlfriend's house to help care for our baby. One night, my girlfriend came over saying that she couldn't do this anymore and that she wasn't meant to be a mom and that I could have it but that she wanted to be done. She quickly became my ex-girlfriend and I decided that I would raise my daughter on my own. It helps that I had amazing support from my aunt and cousins and I was able to finish school and get a great job. Fast forward to yesterday. I'm now 29 with a 13-year-old daughter. We live two hours away from where I grew up in a condo that's just perfect for me and my daughter. I am very content with my life. 
my daughter had a soccer tournament very close to where I grew up. While waiting for my daughter's next game, I had just gone to the car to sit in the air conditioning and get away from the sun for a bit while my daughter was hanging out with her teammates. All of a sudden, someone called my name. I looked around and saw my parents. I was in shock to say the least. They asked me what I was doing. I said, well, after you kicked me out, I had my daughter, who's now 13, and I'm here for her. Then I asked, what are you doing here? Apparently, they were there to support my niece, who's 11, and who also plays soccer. They then apologized, saying they now know they overreacted, and they would love to get to know me again and meet their granddaughter. I was still in shock seeing them, and I told them I'd think about it, and I asked for my mom's number so I could contact her if I decided to let them meet my daughter. I just have no idea what to do. I don't want them to cause mental harm to my baby the same way they did to me. Wait, hold on, hold on. It's not like OP just disappeared off the face of the planet, like he moved to another state, another country, changed his name, was impossible to contact. He's been living with his aunt, the sister of his mom or his dad, for the past 13 years. At any point, his parents could have picked up the phone to call or visited or brought over, I don't know, fresh diapers or something. But no, they just pretended that OP didn't exist for 13 years. OP, your parents are lying scum. Our next Reddit post is from OMC Throwaway. I caught my girlfriend cheating on me via Tumblr. I never thought that I'd be the one. Oh well, here we go. My girlfriend and I have been dating for 8 months. She's 22 and I'm 26. And honestly, up until last night, everything was perfect. She's beautiful, sweet, supportive, and an absolute angel. Yesterday, she was at my place playing Stardew Valley when a Tumblr notification popped up on her phone. I didn't grab her phone or anything, I just saw the lock screen. The only issue is that I didn't recognize the Tumblr page the notification was linked to. Instead of, hey, girlfriend's username, someone liked your post, it was, hey, useless f puppy, someone liked your post. It was clear that she had an alternate adult blog, but I didn't want to embarrass her, so I didn't bring it up. I thought that maybe this was a blog related to our love lives, or it would be an insight into how to get her off, but no. She had been chatting with this other guy, Max, who's 43, and she made this blog to document their taboo dynamic. It's filled with hard kinks that she never mentioned to me, and we do, or we did, have an active love life, so it feels like it should have come up. I didn't know how to feel, especially because her last post was earlier this week. Even though it was just a reblog of someone else's post, I also didn't scroll all the way through it, so I don't know if I got cheated on with him or if he got cheated on with me. They did seem to have some deep-seated chemistry, though. I called her and she came over. I said, you're cheating on me, and she just sighed and nodded. She confessed to everything, gave me the chance to read the messages, and allowed me to ask any questions that I had. She wasn't cruel, and there was no fight, just... You don't meet my sexual needs. I shouldn't have cheated on you, but I do love you, and I swear that this is a me problem, not you. I was dumbfounded. I think I was expecting more of a fight. She kissed my cheek, promised again that this was a reflection on her, packed her things, said goodbye to my bearded dragon, and we broke up. She went home. She hasn't blocked me, nor has she posted that we broke up. Both of her tumblers are still up with a post saying, on hiatus, so I guess we're done. I should be happy that we broke up with maximum closure, but I just feel so awful. I miss her so much. Man, people are so weird to me. If you have some burning fetish that you absolutely have to have fulfilled, then why not at least ask your boyfriend if he's into it? Why just assume that he can't do it and then go get it somewhere else? Right? Just, just ask. What's the problem? What's the issue? Our next Reddit post is from Amabel. My son is only 13. He has a girlfriend who he met at school. Today, he was over at her house. I've met and talked to her mom, but not her father. My son texted me to pick him up. It was earlier than I expected. I went to get him, and I was horrified to find him with a bloody nose. My son refused to tell me what happened until we were home. I was cleaning his face, and he told me very hesitantly what happened. He said that his girlfriend's parents told her to keep her door open. He said that she closed it anyway because, you know... He said that her dad stormed in, grabbed him, and punched him in his face, and yelled at him to never disrespect his house or his daughter again. I told my son this is not okay, and he is never going over there again. 
I'm so upset I can hear my heart beating. There was no reason for this man to attack my son, a child. I texted the mother and she said that she's so sorry and embarrassed. I called my husband and sent him a picture of our son's face. I was crying as I told him what happened to our son. My husband said, I get it, but that man has no right to lay hands on my boy. I'll go over there and see if he's as tough with me as he was with a kid. I asked my husband if that's the best idea. I just don't want him in any trouble. He said, of course it is. It's my job to defend my family. He told me to calm down and to let him handle it from here. This is a nightmare as a mother. My son is a little boy and he was their guest. Oh man, let's see if there's an update on this one. OP's son said they were just kissing and... Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, OP also says that her husband is a police officer. Oh, man. I'll confess, I don't know what the repercussions would be for punching a cop's son, but I'm sure the cop and his cop buddies would do something about this problem, either officially or unofficially, and I'm not really sure which one is worse. That was our slash off my chest, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit episodes every single day.